Hello everyone, I'm CJ Wellerman. Don't forget to click the subscribe button below and we kindly ask that you please help keep our show going and growing by supporting my journalism at patreon.com slash CJ Wellerman. Now let's get into it. You don't need to be a sports enthusiast to know Muslim men are now dominating the sports of boxing, the UFC and mixed martial arts. You need only access to the internet because their names and achievements are literally splashed everywhere. Across multiple weight divisions and disciplines, Muslim fighters have become household names, following in the footsteps of the great heavyweight boxing champions of all time, Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson, both of whom dedicated their lives to Islam. The question is this, why are Muslim men dominating the fighting world today? Well, let's follow the clues and see where they take us. We start with UFC fighter Habib Nurmagomedov, because arguably the new era of Muslim dominance in combat sports begin when he defeated Conor McGregor, who was until this moment in 2018 considered the greatest UFC fighter of all time. Don't like this. Alhamdulillah, tomorrow night I'm gonna smash your boy, guys. I'm gonna smash your boy. Again, full mount, back mount. There's the choke. He's got it, it's under the net. There it is. Nope, it's on the chin. There's the tap. Habib retired two years ago with a perfect record of 29 wins and zero losses. This is a guy who trained for perfection, but not only inside the octagon, but also in the outside world. He told reporters, and I quote, We see a lot of guys who are very good inside the cage, but outside the cage, they're garbage. Some people think we should be like animals, but we're here for a reason. And I never drink or smoke, and not because I'm an athlete, but because I'm Muslim. End quote. Meanwhile, here's the Irish Catholic guy, Habib Crushed. Happy birthday, shine like, the bus. I, I don't drink. Why don't you drink? I don't drink. Why don't you drink? I never drink. I'll tell you some booze at parties. I never drink. You're mad backwards, <laughs> You're I dead when I get my hands on you, do you hear me? I never You're drink. dead. I never drink. All drink. drink. And me and, me and, like, me and the Irish Boston animal, Dana White, the OG of the fight game. He'll soup this bad boy. I think it's going to be a long night for you. For Habib, faith, duty and honor comes first. When come Ramadan, this is everything for me. I don't think about fight. I have to stay Ramadan I have, because I believe in one God. And this is my religion. Religion for me, number one. Sport is not for me, number one. I love sport. I do this all my life, but religion for me is number one. To rise to the top in any combat sport takes an enormous amount of discipline. Boxers and UFC fighters run the equivalent of a marathon each week during training. And that's on top of the constant sparring and gym work. But this is where Islam gives Muslims a distinct advantage. You see, of all the world's major religions, Islam requires the most amount of dedication and discipline. Muslims are not only required to pray five times per day, but also fast for an entire month each year. These practices help them more easily accept and overcome the rigors of constant training. Take Sonny Bill Williams, for instance. He won two World Cups with the New Zealand All Blacks before taking up professional boxing. He talks openly about how converting to Islam made him a better athlete and fighter. Listen to what he said to my friend Eddie from The Dean Show about his life before Islam. In the sporting field at such a young age, and with that came money, came um, attention from the opposite sex. But uh, although I was, uh, from a physical point of view, very strong, um, ready to take on the world mentally, I was, I, will, I didn't have anything. I was very insecure. I was, I wasn't um, equipped to deal with the, 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 those heights and what came with, with uh, fame. This is Sonny Bill now. Good left. Oh my God, Sonny Bill right. Good right. Good combination with SPW. And he's got Tillman. Is he going to go down the first round? Sonny Bull arrived as a boxer. Wow. And Tillman looks like it's, oh, it's all over. What also makes Muslims such fierce opponents is the way in which their religious belief guides them to view death to be the beginning, not the end, of life's journey, which means they're not afraid to take risks inside the cage or ring. 
One of my best mates who trains me, uh, he uh, was a Team GB boxer and he said to me once, he went, I envy religious fighters mm. because they go to another place sometimes that I just can't go to. Like, yeah, that's true. Because he's like, they're in the ring. I'm in the ring thinking, I might die here. Yeah. They're in the ring, like, they think God is protecting them and they're on but this mission. Here's popular British podcaster Mohammed Hijab to expand on that. Think about how Islam expanded. You, you had a group of people in the Arabian desert who took over the Persian Empire and took over the Roman Empire, the two biggest empires almost the world has ever known. Mm. How did they do that? Because they did not fear death. It's as simple as that. But in my opinion, what makes these Muslim fighters really stand out from their rivals and peers is their undeniable commitment to social justice and charitable causes. You see, whereas other religious beliefs, like Christianity, are almost exclusively fixated on the afterlife, Muslims are commanded to establish justice on earth, which requires them to rise up and fight against injustice and oppression wherever they may be. It would then seem obvious that when you're constantly fighting for a cause, greater than yourself, then this can only make you a better all-round fighter, period. This was certainly the case for the greatest of them all. I'm gonna fight not for me, but to uplift my little brothers who are sleeping in concrete floors today in America. Black people who are living on welfare, black people who can't eat, black people who don't know no knowledge of themselves, black people who don't have no future. But Islam not only inspired Muhammad Ali to stand up for his people at home, but also oppress peoples everywhere, especially those who suffered under the crushing weight of American imperialism. In standing against the war in Vietnam, he was willing to risk his life and career. I'm saying you talking about me about some draft and all of you white boys are breaking your neck to get to Switzerland and Canada and London. I'm not going to help nobody get something my Negroes don't have. If I'm going to die, I'll die now right here fighting you. If I'm going to die, you my enemy. My enemy is the white people, not Viet Cong's or Chinese or Japanese. You my opposer when I want freedom. You my opposer when I want justice. You my opposer when I want equality. You won't even stand up for me in America for my religious beliefs. And you want me to go somewhere and fight, but you won't even stand up for me here at home. Muslims are also called upon to defend against those who attack their faith and fellow believers. Which is exactly what happened after an Israeli fighter used an Islamophobic term to smear his Afghan opponent. But Javed Bashrat didn't respond with anger. He even called on his fans to not stoop to his opponent's level, promising he would do the job professionally in the cage. The finish streak is intact. Javed Basharat by submission. Muslim fighters speak out forthrightly against Israel's criminal occupation. It's therefore impossible to deny that fighting for justice in the outside world has made them better fighters inside the cage. And the religion of Islam deserves great credit for that. Many years ago you would be the UFC champion. How good does it feel to finally accomplish this goal? Oof. First of all, you see, I have to say, I always ask God, but he gave me always more than what I ask. Alhamdulillah. And but let me finish with this. I grew up around boxing and I was fortunate enough to help my best friend Troy Waters prepare for two of his four world title fights in the early 1990s. Yes, that's 20 year old me standing directly behind him. Sadly, however, Troy passed away three years ago from leukemia. This episode is dedicated to him and his family. Next year will mark the 30th anniversary of the moment Troy stunned the world by knocking down the legendary Terry Norris who was then regarded as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter on the planet. Yes. Troy was a devout Christian who never drank alcohol, did drugs, or got into any trouble outside the ring. He was a devoted family member with the biggest heart I've ever known. Knowing him has helped me understand why Muslim men have soared to the top of boxing and the UFC in recent years. A feat that can only be explained by a blend of training, discipline, and dedication to Islam. And it's important to tell these stories because countering Islamophobia requires not only exposing injustices in the Muslim world, but also explaining the positive impact Islam has had on the lives of Muslims. Anyway, that's my time for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and we kindly ask you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash CJ We can't produce, sustain, and grow this show without your help, and we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. 
For now, good night, good morning, wherever you are, and stay blessed. Thank you.